this video, I'm going to cover Section 5, Fraud Risk Management for CMA Part 2, still under Lesson 1, Ethics, Fraud, and Risk Management. So for the outline of this lesson, first, I'm going to talk about fraud risk. Second, I'm going to discuss about internal controls. Third, the types of control, and we actually have two categories, the primary controls and the secondary controls. So under primary controls, we have preventive, detective, corrective, and directive. On the other hand, for the secondary controls, we have compensatory controls and complementary controls. So first, what do we mean by fraud risk? So if you haven't watched section 4 of this lesson, I highly suggest that you first watch it since this is simply just a continuation of the previous lesson. When we say fraud risk, it is the possibility of the organization being subjected to fraudulent activity. So I've discussed in previous lessons that we have two types of fraud and these are management fraud and employee fraud. So what do we mean by management fraud? Other name for management fraud is fraudulent financial reporting. So these involve senior management, okay? Fraudulent activities wherein senior management are mostly involved. On the other hand, employee fraud, when we say employee fraud, other name for it is fraud for misappropriation of assets. So under employee fraud, the fraudulent activities are mostly perpetrated by non-senior employees or simply non-senior management. So if you can recall in section 4, there are many fraud risk factors which I have covered. For example, under management fraud, some of the fraud risk factors include pressure to meet target sales, earnings, if there are incentives based on companies' profitability, example, if there are poor cash flows, there are threat of bankruptcy, foreclosures, there are highly complex transactions, and it can also be seen, for example, if there is high turnover of senior management, board members, etc. Okay? On the other hand, under employee fraud, so some of the fraud risk factors which I have covered in the previous lesson, for example, if there is poor supervision. So in case there is poor supervision, then an employee has an opportunity to actually perpetrate fraudulent activities. Another thing, if there is missing documents or undocumented transactions, for instance, or their unexplained budget variances and so on. Now we move on to internal controls. So what is internal control? So when we say internal controls, these include systems and processes which are designed, take note, designed and implemented to prevent, detect, and correct fraud and error. So basically, management usually design controls in their company and there is actually no use if these controls are not implemented. So it is important that all the controls, for example, systems and processes which have been developed by a particular company, it should be implemented and executed in the right way. So here we are testing if the controls are indeed operating effectively. And we have here three main objectives of internal controls. So take note, every system or process designed in a company wherein it is designed as an internal control, the objective there is to prevent, detect, and correct fraud or error. So again, the objective to prevent so preventing instances of fraud and misconduct from occurring in the first place so it's like before anything happens internal controls are designed and implemented so that it prevent instances of fraud and misconduct from occurring in the first place for the second one that is to detect instances of fraud and misconduct when they do occur okay so for example if a particular fraudulent activity has already occurred we have certain controls in our company which has the objective to detect those fraudulent activities which have already occurred. And the third objective is to correct. That is to respond appropriately and take corrective action when integrity breakdowns arise. So for example, if certain fraudulent activities have already occurred, have been discovered or detected, these controls or corrective controls have the objective to respond appropriately and to take corrective action. Okay, so I hope that is clear. So now let's proceed to the types of control. As mentioned earlier, we have two main categories, primary controls and secondary controls. And under primary controls, we have four. 
preventive, detective, corrective, and directive. So under secondary, we have two, compensatory and complementary. So let's dive deep into each one of this. So for primary controls, when we say primary controls, these are the controls which are designed and implemented with the main objective to prevent, detect, correct, and direct. So unlike the secondary controls, primary controls has the main objective to prevent, detect, correct and direct certain fraudulent activities so the control here the controls are specifically designed for this so first when we say preventive controls as i've mentioned earlier these are actually controls with the objective to deter the occurrence of unwanted events so what are some of the examples so for example in any company for example if they have an accounting system or erp the system actually requires password before anyone can access the information or data of the company. So this control is a form of a preventive. It means it prevents any unauthorized users who might alter information or data in the system. Okay? Another example, there is segregation of duties within the company. So for example, one person is assigned in terms of cash receipts. Another person is assigned in terms of cash disbursements. One person is assigned in terms of cash collection. Another person is assigned in terms of cash deposits. Second, detective controls. So basically, detective controls has the objective to detect fraudulent activities in case they have already occurred so one very good example of this is reconciliation so usually in every company one of the many processes in a company is usually monthly reconciliation for example uh, bank reconciliation, reconciliation of subsidiary ledger to the general ledger. So these are detective controls. So that when they detect that uh, some items are not matching or not tying up, they can actually detect where the error is coming from. So what I mentioned earlier, the reconciliation, those are actually manual detective controls. So I also want to emphasize the difference between automated and manual controls. When we say manual controls, these are controls which are designed and implemented with the human intervention. So only the people can actually perform these controls. On the other hand, when we say automated controls, these are actually programmed in the system, in our computers. So third type of primary control is a corrective control. So these controls has the objective to correct the negative effects of any fraudulent activity or error which has already occurred. So one example of corrective controls is having penalty system. So for example, if certain fraudulent activity has been discovered, certain controls are in place in order to correct it. Another example, if an error has occurred, the system does not allow further processing unless the previous error has been corrected okay so last is the directive control wherein these control has the objective to cause or encourage the occurrences of desirable event for example if companies usually have certain policies and principles or procedure manuals which are in place so these controls these policies manuals etc have the objective to direct employees and how to do certain processes in the right way so that in the first place errors will be prevented so now let's proceed to secondary controls so as mentioned earlier there are two types compensatory and complementary so for compensatory control we also term this as mitigative controls so these controls have the objective to reduce risk or error in occurring so these are very useful for example if the primary controls are ineffective or not designed or implemented or operating correctly okay however it is not safe to assume that the compensatory controls alone are enough so one example of this controls on the invoices okay so for example before processing invoices it requires approval approval by a finance officer or higher management okay however during month end we perform reconciliations or 
other controls wherein, for example, if the schedules are not matching with the general ledger, we are actually able to detect if any of the items in the schedule or subsidiary ledger is wrong. For example, if we detect that uh, there is a floating amount pertaining to this invoice, then we are able to compensate the supposedly control which should have effectively detected the error when processing such invoice. Or transaction so let's have an example so for example the process of the company is that certain invoices so sales invoices before processing the transaction into the system it requires the approval of the finance manager however certain invoice has been processed even without approval of the finance manager so there is now a loophole so the control the detective control which is the approval has not been performed so how is the company able to detect that and that is through the presence of compensatory control for example during month end when the finance manager is performing reconciliation of the subsidiary ledger versus the general ledger he noted that there is a floating or a difference in the balances and he noted that there is an over amount in the subsidiary ledger which is pertaining to this invoice so that control compensatory control we are able to detect the error which has not been detected or prevented in the primary controls so i hope that is clear second complementary controls when we say complementary controls it means it complements other controls with the objective of reducing the risk of error or fraud so an example of this is segregation of duties or separating the functions of accounting and custody of certain assets and so on so that ends this lesson it's very short let me know if you have questions comment below if you have clarifications my name is Jean thank you for watching if you like this video hit like share and subscribe till next time